Hello and welcome to the Switch RPG Podcast. My name is Gio and I'm joined as always by Johnny. Johnny, how's it going? It's going good. How's it going with you? It is going great. It's been a while since we've reconnected. I had a few issues on, on my end personally, um, but you know, we're we're past that. We're moving on. We're getting on with the show here. Uh, if this yeah. is your first time listening to the podcast, we are the show from SwitchRPG.com where we bring you the latest and the greatest in the world of RPGs on the Nintendo Switch. So this week, we're discussing the latest Nintendo Direct uh, that happened, I don't know, maybe a, a few days ago, a week, less than a week ago. Less than a week, yeah. Yeah, and some hellish news. Ooh, Ooh no, no, nothing. I, I'm, I'm getting all warm inside. Oh, you're getting all warm inside. All right. And, and much, much more. If, but first, Johnny, what have yep. you been playing? What have I been playing? Oh man, it's been like uh, quite some time. So let's stick with um, what you're currently playing. Yeah, well, I'm, well I did finish. I, I do want to mention. So I finished Don Kong Tropical, Tropical Freeze. So finally finished that. That okay. I did that entirely co-op with my girlfriend. Nice. And so finished that. That's a Great rather game. rather difficult, challenging. It's a challenging game. Let's just say that. Oh yeah, yeah. And co-op is just even harder to <laughs> get through, but it's it's a very fun romp. Yep. Uh, I did finish Hyrule Warriors. Okay. Uh, over this past time, and yeah, I put in like over fifty hours into that game. I did a lot of stuff. I didn't do everything, and yeah. a lot more stuff opens up after you uh, finish the game. Oh yeah. But I ain't touching it anymore. I'm done. <laughs> I am done with that game. So you put, done. If you have fifty hours into it, you put in a lot more than I did. I think I I have maybe thirty thirty five hours. There's just so much optional stuff in that game there um, is, yeah. you know whereas i'm not sure how much after you beat the game i don't know how much of it adds to any story elements it's more of a you the completionist side of you maybe that'll fulfill it but yeah and, it's a lot and, of content there's a lot of content and uh man some of it is so i i Last I talked, I mentioned that I needed to turn up the difficulty to get a challenge. Well, I eventually turned down the difficulty because, uh, yes, it was harder, but it wasn't funner. Okay. Uh, extra difficulty. It was more of a nuance. Yeah. It, so, sometimes. With, from, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, sometimes with just difficulty spikes, you know, depends on how, I guess, the developers handle it, you know. Whether you give enemies just say more health or you do less damage, that's not the greatest way to manage difficulty. It's a lazy way. Yeah, and I think that's kind of what they what they did. Yeah, yeah, and the the big thing that I didn't that deterred me from the combat. It was really just it's not a bad system. It's just it became monotonous after mm. doing it over and over and over again a thousand times. Yeah, is the enemies where you have to break their guard. In order yeah. to actually deal damage to them. Yep. I mean, you can deal damage to them, but it's it's minuscule. You have to break their little shield icon thing, yep. and actually to to take them out or use a special attack. And that that just got to me on hard mode, where it it just took too long, and I felt like I was just wasting time. So I switched. I lowered it back down to normal difficulty, and even then it got annoying to just every single enemy beyond the trivial cannon fodder it was the same thing you had to break their guard through your runes or through blocking or dodging getting slow-mo dodge type stuff yeah uh or doing your special attack so it just uh it just became very repetitive mm -hmm. and even though they were throwing lots of new characters for you to play around with it was the same the same kind of flow of things and some of the characters were just not fun at all yeah yeah like I, um i think you enjoyed a character one of the first surprise characters more than i did um i, I forget his name and i don't want to go too spoilery um Hester. yeah that's who it was 
it's not really too spoiler because like I said, he's one of the first main characters you get. Yeah. Um, I just did, did not enjoy playing as him. So he went, ultimately he went forgotten for pretty much the entire campaign. Yeah. And I kind of stopped playing with Hestu. I mean, my go-tos were the characters that were reasonably sized, uh, which was Link, uh, Mifa, and uh, Urbosa were my three go-tos. Yep. And uh, I would that fourth one would be interchangeable because uh, sometimes it would be required characters. So it would either be like Zelda or uh, or um, what's uh, Zelda's helper? I forgot her name. Tashika. Oh, oh, geez. Yeah. She was actually pretty good. She's all right. I, I just don't like her little combo system, how slow it is to, to well, build up. With yeah, the, Zelda was really you know, slow as well. Yeah, I did like Zelda when when the thing with Zelda happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep, uh, I agree. I think that's when the tides changed with her. Yeah. Um, but she, yeah. she wasn't like great afterwards. She just became usable. Right. Yep. Yeah. Now, uh, how, how about... um. <clears throat> I think what happened with you is just you just did too much side content <laughs> and maybe you did too much of the monotonous stuff where I just did mostly main story, stuck to the path, um, hit all the major beats, did I did quite a substantial amount of side stuff. Um it just maybe you went too much. Maybe. I don't know. No, nah, because I, I was kinda like over it halfway through. Okay. But I had to like because I knew I wanted to beat it because I wanted to see through the story. Yep. Um and see that to the end. So, so I did. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't bad. It was just. Uh, it was just not. Not for me. Like halfway through, I'm like, all right, this is. This is a, a not me kind of game. Yeah. And I wasn't like upset at it. Uh, or right, because you can't like change that. really the style of game. It, I mean, it is. Yeah, it is what uh, it is. But. It's it. The big thing that did upset me though is the performance. of the performance of it does get to me. That that was not appreciated at all. The yeah. the slow frame per second type stuff that was happening. Okay. Um, the other thing that upset me was the story. The story was just bad. Uh, <laughs> I have I have I have just a different opinion on it, but yeah, okay. It's it's garbage. It's uh, it's not even related to to Breath of the Wild. It's a side thing. It's a different, it's sort of like an alternate universe type thing that happens. So it's completely throwaway. It, yeah. it, it has no consequences in what happens in Breath of the Wild or that canon. And in fact, it builds its own little mini canon on the side. And it's, and even when it does that, it just doesn't take itself seriously at all. So it's, yeah. it centers around the, that little tiny robot at the yeah. very beginning. And, and that and that was its downfall was that tiny yeah. robot. I kind of wish it stuck to the path, and maybe it's because they didn't want it to, you know, spoil Breath of the Wild. But I think that's where they did themselves a kind of a disservice. They should have stuck with the path, did the story as it as it turned out, and and go from there. But just adding that that small guardian or whatever it is, it, it you know I don't know. It kind it kind of ruined it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Other than that. I, I thought the story was was really good. Well, I still have more complaints with the handling of the characters. The at every character, it was so formulaic. Every single character, you know, things look dire on a cutscene. All of a sudden, another character comes in last second and saves the day, joins the fray, mm -hmm. whatever it is, and it's it happened over and over again. It was formulaic and it was tropey. And it was predictable, and it was like, oh, so you're just gonna treat me like a child with the story stuff? It it, it just felt like paint by the numbers kind yeah. of uh, storytelling, where they were just playing it so safe, so sim simple, and and sort of expected. Right. It, it was. It's kind of the the kind of story that you get when they when you have people that don't want to take any risk whatsoever with the, with the material. And they just want to play it very, very, very safe. And also, they're taken for whatever reason. the The audience in their mind is is a younger audience, uh, a much younger audience than what Breath of the Wild would 
typically attract, which is a full gamut. Yeah, of, it could be any range, uh, really. Right? So, I mean, you get you get maturity in in things like Pixar movies. You get plenty of mature topics, subject sure. matter, things I mean, that could be appreciated by people of all ages. Sure. But in in uh, Calamity, uh, Age of Calamity, it's it's clearly aimed towards young people. I, I mean, they should have done a story that is part of the canon of Breath of the Wild, and therefore the ending has to be very sad. Yeah, they should do that. They should have. Yeah, and I do like I, I do wish they did that, but I didn't mind the direction they they took. Um, I liked Zelda as a character. Uh, in this in this iteration of Age of Calamity, I I enjoyed uh, what she did, and, and appar- uh, not apparently, but I what I really and I've always said this. I <laughs> wish they they would do a game just surrounded by her, um, which maybe Breath of the Wild two would be that. I I don't know, but that that is that going to conclude our uh, our Age of Calamity re- mini review? Yeah, yeah I suppose <laughs> it's it, it's definitely a letdown. But mm-hmm. it's not a significant letdown where I where I you know hate the game or anything like that. Like I'm I'm glad I have the game. I'm glad I played through it. Uh, I'm just disappointed. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed my time with it though. Uh, other games I've been working on, continuing with Ogre Battle Sixty Four. I actually streamed that a few times, and you I'll did? probably stream it a few more times. I'm at the very end of that. So Please do. I'll, I'll I'll continue to stream that, and people can see what ending of the. 18 or whatever endings are in that game. I have no clue which one I'm going to get, but we'll see which one I get. Hopefully it's a better one than the first time I got played <laughs> that game. Uh, played a little bit of Luigi's Mansion 3. I'm getting close to the end on that. Oh, I thought you were yeah. done with that, but no? No, no, not yet. Oh, okay. Not yet. Yeah, that's a long game. It is rather long. My son and I played play through it co-op. Um, I, I didn't like how it was... Um, I mean, I guess for what it is, I it, it was the co-op was okay, but yeah, I did uh, a little bit of co-op. Most of it is solo, though, from yeah. what I played. Uh, there's some segments where you definitely need co-op. Co-op makes it way easier. Yeah, a lot of the bosses I felt were would have probably been challenging yeah. without co-op. But yeah, yeah. Uh, played Death Stranding. Oh, the walking I simulator. Played, yeah, and I played a lot of that too i'm probably like halfway through it and i'm definitely going to be finishing that game i wasn't expecting to enjoy that game as much as i am and i'm actually really enjoying it as as weird and walking simulator ish that it is like i i I actually found the walking and delivery stuff fun which is so weird it's so weird because it's like survival (laughs) survival delivery man nice (laughs) mechanics it's so weird uh so that's interesting and the story is weird too that's a very weird game yeah not surprising yeah and the last game i've been playing i don't know if i'm gonna beat it because i have no clue how the how to beat the game you just kind of keep on playing it is uh an older switch rpg called uh, the friends of ringo ishikawa Oh yeah, I I have heard about the game. I know nothing about it. It's uh, uh you're you're playing as a as like a you're playing. I think it takes place in the uh, 80s or 90s, uh, probably the 80s, and you're playing as like a a Japanese high school uh gang thug, high schooler gang thug. You have okay. like your own little posse of of friends, and you can kind of like ditch classes, go to classes and study and get better grades. Uh, or you can kind of walk around the town area and find other rival school gangs and beat them up and steal their, I guess, lunch money. <laughs> and as, as you're sort of playing day, day after day, different events happen where you like go on dates with, uh, with girls or, uh, or hang out with your friends, uh, your various friends. Uh, they're doing stuff like like weird little different activities go on, or where you find out like, oh, one of your your friends is has joined the theater club and is like doing like Shakespeare performances, <laughs> and you kind of make fun of them for or whatever. So, like just weird high schooly type stuff like that. It's interesting. It's not a fun game. 
<laughs> what 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 made you get into that get this game? So I, I looked up this list of like games with or RPGs with really good storylines. All right. And I don't know if I qualified it for Switch or just any RPG with really good story, but that game popped up on the list of what I found, the results. So I gave it a shot. And I, I'm actually I, I, very surprised because I'm looking at the Metacritic store score. Yeah. Not so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not so good. <laughs> it's not good. I, I do not recommend it. It's, okay. weird. it's not bad, though. It's just weird. It's very, it's a very laid back game. You're just in it for the narrative. I'm in it for the narrative, but the narrative isn't happening as often as I would have liked. <laughs> and it's also like unguided the entire experience. There's no good tutorial explaining things like All right. you, you have to go and buy food and eat it. There is like a hunger system to it, but I have no clue how it works and whether like if I starve myself, if that's going to have negative consequences. So I'm uh, kind of just going through the motions of trying to finish the game but I don't know how to finish it because it's unguided. There's right. like, I don't know how to finish it other than like, let the days play out and let the events trigger. Right. Oh, so, I weird. mean, it, do you have to wait for the, the actual time to, uh, to move the narrative along? Uh, there's ways to pass the time quickly. Oh, okay, you're you're okay. kind of, um, it, it's like a time management game, uh, or, or like a date in sim, except time happens in real yeah. time instead of, uh, activity based. I'm, I'm, but there look, are, I'm looking at screenshots. It look it looks like some sort of River City Ransom type of type of game. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there you can. I hit. I think I hit max level. So I'm like at level ten, which I think is the maximum because I haven't been able to gain any more experience. And some of my stats are maxed out. Some of them are. And you can go to the gym to like learn new stuff. But I kind of stumbled onto that like later. So maybe I I like min max too much because right now i'm like kind of maxed out on a lot of stuff and uh there, there was what like studies that you study papers research papers that uh because apparently you're a smart kid but you're a thug so you're like playing it as if you're not smart but the principal knows that you're smart mm -hmm. and like hands you research papers and says here you'll get 10 grand if you uh if you do perform this research thing this 10 grand scholarship or whatever it's in it's in yen so it's it's not that much sure. it's only like 100 bucks or something uh so I, I do the study and it takes a while to do it and then i did another one after that and then that's it there was like no more studies for me to perform i guess i i finished that part of the game but things continue so it's weird it's kind of it seems like it's buggy there it's definitely clunky in some areas and a little buggy in some other areas the combat is interesting uh it's interesting enough to be interesting but it's not good not good not so much not good. yeah so oh, uh right. that, that's kind of what i've been playing i don't recommend uh the friends of ringo ishikawa to anyone <laughs> just just to put it out there i would say whatever list that you had uh gotten that recommendation from to maybe just cross that one that list off your list I'm crossing the person who wrote that list off my list. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't you. But you know, uh, Switch RPG did review that game. And? And they said it's good. What was the actual scoring, though? Good. Good? Yeah, Green oh. Good. G-O-O-D. Oh, boy. That we, person is crazy. We'll have to... We'll have to... Ten lashings for that person. I, I think we need to, like expand our rating system because having like four different ratings or three different ratings is not enough because yeah, it, it, like, it can make make things a, a little difficult yeah we're we're like raising the bar or or or, or kinda yeah. making games like friends of ringo seem a bit better than what they actually are yeah yeah and maybe that was one that was kind of on the bubble for you know okay to good I'm not sure. I haven't read the review. Even okay, I would balk at a little bit. I, I'd accept it, but I'd balk at because the game's bad. Hmm. I would put it in the bad category. Yeah. I have yet to find the game that you really enjoy, to be honest with you. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So what I've been playing, thank you for asking. Um, I've been playing a little bit of CrossCode. Now, CrossCode... Yeah. 
I, I, I'm at the first the first dungeon. The dungeon is 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 good. It's challenging. I like the the aspect of their the puzzles and kind of the mini bosses. Are very much reminiscent of you know Link to the Past. But I will say that the dungeon is probably way too long. Too long. Uh, way too long. It it took me it like an hour, hour and a half almost to complete the dungeon. How is it uh kind of Zelda style with like puzzles and yeah, rooms? There, there are a lot of puzzles and then some sometimes the puzzles will end in kind of like a mini boss or a sub boss. Uh, and you know, those can be challenging in and in of itself. Uh, and then the, 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 one of the, then they have kind of like, they're, they're a little more difficult than mini bosses or sub bosses, but they're not the big boss. Uh, so you have that to contend with and there's just, I don't know. It's just, it's just like labyrinth after labyrinth after labyrinth. It's just, it just went on for a really long time. I guess longer than I expected it to be for the very first dungeon. Mm. maybe again that just might be a, a me thing but i just felt like for a first dungeon to be on it for an hour and a half felt like a really long time and maybe it was, i was under leveled a little bit I, i'm not sure maybe that was part of the case where i just couldn't really progress through it fast enough because i was just under leveled but it just felt like a very long time other than that i like the narrative i like kind of the superficial mmo type of thing that that's going on in, in the game. I really like that. I like the, the characters are, I mean, for the most part, I've only met a few characters. I'm, I'm only about maybe less than 10 hours, I think into the game. Um, but so far so good. I like a lot of the progression system, the skill tree. I just got my first element, which is basically after the first, first dungeon, you get your first element. Um, so I, I like that when you switch to your element, it's basically like you're in a whole new skill tree and you gain the attributes that you've put into that skill tree, all the critical multipliers, things of that nature. It all changes to that skill tree. And the other one is kind of forgotten. So it's almost like you're building a bunch of different characters for that element. And that element, I don't know. Have you played the game? No, I haven't. Okay. And that element again, depending on how you build it, only lasts for uh, so long. Um, you can overload it. So it basically works on how many times you use the, use the element. Uh, so, but there are things in the skill tree that you can kind of, you know, make it, make that element last longer while you're out there. So I don't know. I, I, I think so far, I like what I've, I've, I've seen so far. That first dungeon was a bit of a, a slog. But I will, I will persist. I will, I will carry on and, and see what maybe the next dungeon. And maybe, like I said, maybe I was just kind of under level for that first dungeon where it just, it just kind of took, took a little too long. I'm not sure. But the, hmm. the, art, the art style is, you know, it's pixel art style. There isn't really going on as much in, much, in terms of like lighting, dynamic lighting. It's, there's nothing like that that really sets it apart. The music is really excellent. Um, I definitely recommend it. It's a, it's a really good game. It took a while for me to play it, mostly because I was waiting for the physical version. It finally came in, so I was I was able to play. I mean, I could have bought the digital version, but I just didn't want to double dip. So, doing a little bit of that, well, doing a little bit of the Monster Sanctuary. Monster Sanctuary. Have you played that one? Uh, nope. All right. Well, it's kind of like a side scrolling pixel art kind of Pokemon style. It's a creature collecting game. I'm not sure if I'm as, you know, invested in, in that one. It's okay. It seems super, super easy. It, the challenge isn't, isn't there for me. I, I don't know if it's maybe geared towards a younger audience, um, but there's a little bit of platforming and depending on what monster you have uh, while you traverse the world, you can have a monster out. They do specific things. Uh, say, for example, there's a bird creature that will allow you to kind of float in the air a little bit to get to different platforms. There's some that will that will kind of break walls for secret openings. It's kind of like your Metroidvania type of type of deal there. So there's a little bit of platforming in there as well. Um, the the story the story hasn't grabbed me yet either. So I don't know. Do those abilities, do they sort of uh, take away control when you're doing the platforming exploration stuff? Or are they sort of something that has a skill involved when you use those abilities? I'm not sure what what you mean. 
So is, is it scripted in that you hit a button and, for example, the bird will fly you over to the yeah. next part of the ledge? Or yeah. is it that you hold a button, the bird gives you the ability to fly, but you have to do the navigation yourself? It's kind of a mix in between. I mean, for example, you'll be you'll be trying to get to a ledge that's a little farther away. Let's use the bird ex- example again. And so you'll make the jump. You push a button to hang on. You got to hold the button the entire time, and the bird will kind of fly fly you over. You let go of the button. The bird you, the bird drops you. Um, okay. Yeah, so, so that, it's a little bit of that. Yeah, so it it seems like it it's platform it's an actiony type of action mm-hmm. ability that you that you're doing that. Yeah, it, it definitely is. It, it's not a it's not a scripted scripted event. Okay. So okay. you can swap out these 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 creatures anytime you want, and you know if you see something that you want to get, some of them. Well, no, you get the double jump ability, but some of them will allow you to do that. Some will burn vines. Some will smash through walls. Um, again, they all just kind of do different different things. But I don't know. Like I said, the the narrative really isn't isn't grabbing me. So I, I don't know how much longer I'll be investing into that one. Yeah. Also, been playing Mario 3D World. I've been playing that with my my childrens. We played this a lot on the Wii U. I I have. Uh, I think this is one of my favorite Mario games, other than Mario 3. That was kind of, Mario 3 is kind of up there, but Mario 3D World is was actually really fun yeah. for me and for my kids to play. you got four players in there, up to four players anyway. The only thing, with, though, is the local wireless. Like, I had my son connect to our gameplay because he, he didn't want to play on the same screen, whatever. Anyway, there's a whole parenting <laughs> issue there. So he decided to local wireless in, and boy was it laggy. There was um, it, we had a, a difficult time there. I'm hoping they fix some issues there, and we didn't do the online play because you can also, you know, if you have a Nintendo Switch online, you can pick up that way. Maybe that one will that way will be better. I have no idea, but the local wireless was was a problem. It was a big problem. Should probably try it out. That's weird that the local wireless. I wasn't aware that it even supported local wireless. Yeah. Uh, yeah m- maybe there's a different uh, reason for it not working the way you wanted it to, though. I mean, local wireless is local wireless. I mean, there really it should be. If anything, we should have zero issues with local wireless. It should be, and, and Nintendo's done local wireless really well gaming yeah. for for decade plus. Yeah. So weird that it doesn't work well yeah so been that's that's been my life as of recently playing okay. playing games what about what about bowser's fury i haven't gotten there yet you haven't gotten there yet okay. no no isn't it uh, a separate mode i'm not sure i uh, like i said we were kind of just taking it you know following the progression normal normal progression it could be a separate mode i have no idea <laughs> i'm just going I'm just going along with what they want to do, to be honest with you. Uh, speaking of second, secondary mode, uh, or separate mode, uh, Xenoblade Definitive Edition, I need to I need to actually get on that. My girlfriend finished it, um, I don't know, like a month ago or something like that. So I need to, I need, now that she's finished it, I need to sort of play that whole expanded content, uh, of paralogue, prologue, yeah, right, or whatever it's called. right. How was it a lot of time? Was it a big time investment for that epilogue or prologue or whatever it is? I don't know. I haven't fired it up yet. Okay. So I have no... Well, we'll get on that. I, I what... will. I, I do want to want to play that extra Shulk in. Uh, uh, what was her name? <laughs> what was her? What was her name? Oh, I forgot her name. Oh yeah, you don't even know. Ah, Come Amelia. on. Oh, I was waiting. I was waiting. I, I, didn't, I didn't know it. <laughs> All right, let's let's move on to the topic du jour. The topic du jour. Well, there's a couple of them anyway. Uh, the Nintendo Direct happened kind of out of nowhere. They announced it, you know, two days prior. They said there's a direct hap, or maybe even one day. I don't know. Direct happening, fifty minutes, which was absolutely insane. I'm like, what the heck are they gonna be doing for fifty minutes? And to be honest, I wasn't interested in a lot of it. But we're going to take out some of the meat and potatoes of the RPG world. 
there's there's yeah. quite a bit there, I think. So let's hit some of the small stuff. Like we, we got Metopia, uh, Metopia announcement. Again, not a game, not a game for me. Um, I'm not into the whole the whole Meverse thing. Did you do the Metopia stuff on 3DS? No. Uh, I I did that quite a lot because it was uh, that was the one thing to do when you were at a convention. That was kind of like the one reason to bring your 3DS at a convention and yep. tag people, and then they show up. And it was a couple of different apps, but the the RPG one, the Metopia uh, app, whatever it was. Uh, it's been so long. But that was the one where the, their Mies come in and they're, depending on their favorite color, that, that changed their, I guess, class or, or their magical attack that they could do. Yeah. Or their, their unique ability. Because uh, I think it changed up on, depending on the color. And uh, you would need to leverage that. And it was like some colors that were just, uh, some colors that offered unique abilities that can only defeat enemies at a certain higher difficulty because i beat it uh but once you beat it you go through it again but everything's like harder so yeah. i i think it's like endless i don't know how many times i beat that 3ds metopia thing but um it was weird because it's like you're me but with like uh with like a, a wig on and and you're you're like the prince that, that has been or princess that's been captured and you have to save yourself, but you're using other people's me's. It's ridiculous and stuff like that. So the fact that they're making this into a full-blown, legit thing on Switch is both interesting, hilarious, and why? Yeah, I, I think that's that's the thing with me. Like, why? Like, me's aren't really a big thing with the Switch, honestly. No, they're not. They, they haven't I mean, made it a big deal. Is this going to be offering the same type of functionality uh, that that the 3DS like the big thing about it was tagging people in right. real life yep. and using their me's if they're are they going to is that the core mechanic of this as well with even more bells and whistles but if if are they still doing that and if so like how does that even work when conventions aren't happening anymore <laughs> I have no idea. Maybe they'll allow you just to tag your friends. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, like I mentioned, this, this really, it's not a game for, made for me. That's for sure. Well, the studio that's attached to it is interesting. Who is it? Right. It's Grezzo. It's, oh. it's the people that made um, the Wind Link, Wait, not the Link's Wait, Awakening. Uh, Link's Awakening remake. Yeah. Huh. That's a talented studio. It is to put them on this. Eh, I don't know why. Ex exactly, I'm, I'm with you. It doesn't seem like a good allocation of resources. Not so at all. I'm, Not at all. I'm hoping they turn it into something interesting. Please, please hope they do. Yeah. Or just, if they don't, just move along real quick. Yeah, just just gloss over. I mean, there hasn't been much development time between Link's Awakening and this, so maybe there wasn't much time involved in 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 this. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so we had that. Let's go. We had a Hades physical version announced uh, for the people who like to collect physical games. I think this is a limited run thing. Might even be a. Is it a Best Buy only deal? I don't. I don't even remember. Um, I don't know, but I'm upset. You're upset. Why? Uh, they should have did that at launch. I would have gotten. Yeah, and, and that's what stinks about games like this, right? I mean, people people already purchase them so now they got a double dip it's actually i think double the cost of what the digital version so now you're in at it like at full retail at this point so it's like why <laughs> why couldn't you uh, just do it before i'll tell you what the game was what 40 uh 20 bucks digital yeah so if it's 40 bucks it's still worth it that game is so good that's what i mean now can, now you've bought it twice and it, it's 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 full retail at this point you know, yeah. I mean, they got some cool extras, you know, you got the full sound downloadable soundtrack. I think there's a, an art book um, and it's physical. So I, for me, you can't go wrong with physical. Um, I've already pre-ordered it. So, I mean, I'm complaining about it, but here I am already played it and I'm getting the physical <laughs> version. <laughs> I just can't help myself. So, um, so yeah, we got, we got that going on. Um, one thing I, I'm just going to gloss over this because honestly, this is a smash ultimate thing, but 
when they when they were going over the Xenoblade stuff, I'm like, oh my god, are they yeah. really gonna announce something Xenoblade right now? Oh my god, are they really gonna do it? And then all of a sudden, it's just this Smash thing. I mean, good for the Smash people. Uh, I mean, they're already kind of up in arms about this. You know, some people love it, some people hate it. I mean, honestly, it doesn't affect me either way. Other than I thought they were gonna announce something Xenoblade for yeah. regular folks, you know. But um, and I, I'm not. I know I'm not the only one. But yeah, it's cool. People, uh, Pyra and Mithra are coming to Smash Ultimate. What really actually has me excited about this? After I cried a little bit that it wasn't really going to be a full a full fledged RPG was that there may be amiibos associated with this. So I'm, oh yeah, I'm okay yeah. with that. I'll collect the amiibo because again, that's just what I do. But other than that, Smash Ultimate news. I mean, honestly, it doesn't affect me either way. That's that's a guarantee that there's going to be amiibos. So that's that's really good news. I mean, I'm I was with you on the same boat. Uh, up until the letter popped up, I'm like, yeah. oh, it's it's smash well well played well done uh i'm excited it's uh it also shows that nintendo has some foresight into the the xeno blade franchise right and and they definitely see something there and i mean just the announcement of that caused a spike in sales for xeno blade 2 yeah and that game, if you ask me, it came out on a very bad month. Uh, one of the, I think, one of the worst months that it could have gone on, and got buried a little bit. Even though it sold sold really well, that game is phenomenal. I lo- I love that game. Yeah, I mean, it didn't so, perf- it yeah. didn't perform the greatest, but still, I enjoyed it. Uh, so I think just giving it another spotlight, uh, I think a lot more people are gonna be. Are going to wonder, especially in Smash, which is one of the largest Switch games of all time, having those characters pop up there, mm-hmm. getting spotlighted. Hopefully, it generates even more sales for Xenoblade Two, and leads to the inevitable Xenoblade Three. Yeah, I mean, I know, I think we've we've talked about it in the past. We we know Monolith is working on something else, but are they also working on a Xenoblade? Um. Uh, you know, sequel, maybe it'll be a trilogy. I mean, I would love that. I would love for that to happen. I would love to have for it to happen like right now, if possible. But yeah. All right. Then we also had some age of calamity news. We're getting an expansion. And from what I saw, the expansion doesn't really look that great, to be honest with you. They didn't really show much of the expansion content. No, basically it was just, um, it was just uh let, let me see if I can pull that up here. But it was just almost like a title card of what what's what's to come. It was nothing really that interesting to be honest with you. So I don't even know if it's really worth it. Let's see if I can pull this up. All right. So we have the expansion which is $20. Uh you um, purchase bonus available May 28th. So it's not coming for a, quite a while. You get a newly added weapon for Link and costume for Link and then that's just a purchase bonus. And then June 2021, Wave 1, you get expanded roster, newly added weapon types, new challenges in the Royal Ancient Lab, and newly added challenging enemies. Okay. Uh, Then Wave 2, available November 2021, so not for a long end of the year. This is going to be a long time. Uh, New character vignettes, newly added stages, expanded roster, new battle skills for existing characters. I don't know if that's worth 20 bucks. I mean, for the most part, I think people have completed the game. Um, it would have been nice to have these things available kind of right away, to be honest. So I don't know if there's going to be, there's not really play any replayability in, in my mind, but I don't know. Cause I don't, I don't see any story. It's just, you know, new enemies, new, new characters to play as and, and new stages. I mean, there's, yeah. where's the, where's the story content? Like what's the what's the the give me a reason to go back and play it? This doesn't really seem like it's giving you that. Well, it's it's exactly that. It's it's the challenges, right? Which yeah. were just side things, so it's not new chapters. So there's no new chapters here. Yeah. At all. Uh and it's twenty bucks. I mean, it's got the thing I find the most interesting over here is the uh the new newly added challenging enemies so i'm hoping it's new enemy types that would be 
that'd be interesting to have is different enemy types that actually you know change things up a bit but even then it's probably not going to get all that uh all that nuance or anything like that and yeah. just 20 bucks for this overall is not worth it it doesn't seem like i mean it just seems like it's way too late and for what it's adding eh, i don't know yeah. doesn't seem I mean, like it's worth it yeah compare this to the dlc for breath of the wild too uh breath of the wild which right. was also i think 20 bucks right I'm not not entirely sure. And that came with that changed up stuff mm-hmm. dramatically and added. Uh, I th- I thought was huge improvements. Right? You had the whole uh, uh, master sword challenges. Yep. With the uh, trials. With, yep. With the master difficulty, and then on the second wave, you had a completely new dungeon with with quests they had to do in order to unlock the dungeon. Then you did the divine beast the new divine beast dungeon thing and that was awesome and that led to the motorcycle they get to ride around yeah so yeah i don't i I don't i don't feel like this uh expansion is really that worth it to be honest with you um next we have some outer wilds i thought we already knew this was coming um and they didn't really give us much more information i think they gave us a release window um i don't know what it is off the top of my head and i thought i had written it in the notes here but we just they gave us a little more maybe a little more gameplay which was which is nice but i mean let let's all right let's get the game on here we we've known about it for a while it says summer 2021 i know a lot of people are interested in playing it i know it's a good game so let's let's see it so that was uh, announced again um ba, 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 mario golf mario golf makes its way back this uh anything that piques your interest at all mario golf it's mario golf that all <laughs> that alone piques my interest because yeah. that is a very fun party game uh type thing for whatever reason like golf kind of works well especially if it's mario golf it, it works pretty decently well i'm not gonna get it but it has it seems like it it has like the best of both worlds of the multiplayer side of it uh, which definitely has, and that speed golf looks real fun. Yeah, it looks, looks like looks chaotic. chaotic. <laughs> yeah, it looks like fun chaos. So, so that was it, it. Looks like they re they gave like a nice breath of fresh air for the multiplayer side of the Mario Golf series and the single player side of things. Where I forgot which version of Mar- Mario Golf it was. I think it was one of the handhelds, either DS or 3DS or something like that. Uh, where it had like this RPG uh, storyline mode, yeah. and it's like they're going full ham on that for this version which is very exciting yeah that that's that's what really caught my eye was kind of the, the story mode uh so yeah hopefully we get some some rpg goodness in there uh speaking of rpg goodness we have a skyward sword hd remaster the zelda game no one wanted <laughs> what are you uh, talking about that game is great that game is terrible this is the one of the this is probably one of the ugliest games, ugliest Zelda games. I'm talking modern Zelda games to come out. Uh, Twilight Princess is the ugliest. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. This, this one's sorry. This one's, it still looks ugly. <laughs> I don't care what I'm you do to it. it. It's not a pretty Zelda game, but it's not. All right, you know, what? I'm with you. It can be quite possibly the ugliest. It's, it's not only ugly. I mean, they, they've still. I, they they tried to be really innovative, obviously with the Wii. So I mean, they're they've integrated some a lot of the motion controls. They brought a lot of that back. Now, how do the Switch Lite people do it? Okay, now they have kind of almost button mappings to. I mean, it just really seems convoluted. Probably one of the worst, um, worst Zelda games to bring to the Switch. To be honest with you, it's just something like this that's just in, that's just involves so much convoluted kind of like button mappings and controls and this and that like you have to oh uh, please oh, phone one of the worst zelda oh it's, games? it's it's probably one of the worst in my opinion one of the worst zelda games yes blasphemy blasphemy Bla- oh, i mean i mean take out one of like the cdi games we're not talking those those types of games i mean there are some really you know really it's, trashy ones it's better than the 3ds zelda games except for uh not not 3ds uh what was I going to say? The Spirit Tracks? Well, there was okay. DS ones? Yeah. They're, they're, uh, like I said, it's one of the worst ones. It's it's not really... It's not a great game. 
It really is. It's got isn't. one of the best stories. Okay, cool. I can't play it though because it looks terrible. It plays. It doesn't play that great either. I think they need to like re-upload that trailer or something because I don't know. It just didn't. It visually, it didn't look good. The game runs sixty frames per second HD. Uh, I'm guessing 1080p. It's not for certain on on that 1080 side of things, but they did advertise 60 frames per second. Yeah, I that, don't know. That's, that's good stuff. But that, yeah, yeah, thank um, thank you. That's great optimization. Now this is what we have to play. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I just think there was just better options. Like they could have easily ported over Wind Waker HD. It's already HD. Just like make it more HD, I guess. Uh, there, there was just, I don't know. There's just better, better options. Uh, I, I, did you play Skyward Sword? Oh, okay. Sk- I, I could not. I could not play it. I couldn't because it it involves. I can't do motion controls. It just takes away from the experience. I don't like and my now, games to be interactive like that. I just don't. Now you can. Yeah, but it's just okay. You got to slightly hold the the down on the d-pad and and then do this move and it's just like no i just want to i want to attack that that thing that's whatever that enemy with a button i don't want to have to do so many different things to get certain angles on a on a slash it's just too much mon- too much it's that's the whole thing with skyward sword is that extra nuanced combat it's it is really good the combat system is Really good in Skyward Sword. Nah. Nah. You should definitely give it a give it a chance because it's uh it's more like Zelda two, uh from oh, the NES. It, oh, it's kind of like that. that where where you do have to be. I mean, Skyward Sword's way more exact, and they built enemy encounters in combat around that entire mechanic. So you really do have to work with being precise identifying you know where the enemy's blocking or or the nature of the enemy and what parts of them are armored not armored exposed and really pinpoint your your attacks and and react in a way and do slashes at at certain angles uh that that would be applicable to defeating them mm, yeah. it's really good yeah whatever i want to move on it seems like i'm going to move on just like nintendo has moved on from zelda's 35th anniversary they they like have not even acknowledged it yet up to up until this day the, like the anniversary was like a couple days ago and they still haven't even acknowledged zelda's 35th anniversary they have which, a whole year to acknowledge no 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 no. i want something an acknowledgement on the actual date and they have not done it which is a travesty in and of itself i can't believe they did that they're doing they're doing zelda dirty they're doing metroid dirty they're doing all of our all the games, oh, oh, oh. Are, oh, they're doing them dirty. They're doing them dirty. Don't you say that they're doing Zelda dirty. Look, they, they're, they're doing Metroid dirty. <laughs> definitely that doing Metroid. But, so you have to use Metroid as the example of how dirty is actually done. <laughs> Zelda right now is looking pretty clean to me. From, no. From the Metroid side of Not when they, the way they treated Mario. I understand Mario. Obviously, that's Nintendo's bread and butter. That's their mascot. I totally understand that. But they're not even doing Zelda, their next best franchise. They're not even doing that on a tenth of a level as what they did with Mario. Mario, they dedicated and, asked, and are still dedicating time to mario's 35th maybe they don't want to overshadow it i have no idea but the fact remains they have yet they have yet to even mention zelda's 35th and they either need to come out with a bang with something or say nothing at all with two things they have an expansion to age of calamity oh you knock it you, you knock it right off what do you knock it off that is two things are you saying right. that that Age of Calamity isn't big enough. Age of Calamity or... expansion. We just went over how absolute trashy that expansion is. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you want to you want to reflect on that as a, as an example of uh, of how they're not treating Zelda fans dirty. We know, we know Breath of the Wild Two is coming out. It could come out this year, which and, would be for the thirty fifth. But they don't want to commit to it. No, they. I, I guess they can't commit to anything. But I mean, oh, I, yeah. I felt like they should have. They should. They could have. They could have started something, you know. And they're giving us unique uh, controllers, Joy Cons. 
which I've pre-ordered. Anyway, let's <laughs> let's move on from this. I mean, we could go on forever with Zelda, and I'm just it's just getting me really fired up right now, and I just I just can't hang right now. Um, Saga Frontier. Uh, is it Saga Frontier? Is that what it's called? Saga Frontier Remastered? I don't know why I, I don't have that here. Yeah. Uh, we got a release date on that. I'm not very much a Saga fan, mostly because it reminds me of Octopath, and I don't like Octopath. I like it visually, but I don't like it narratively. Um, so we got a release. Is it a release date, though? Or a release window? Now I can't remember. I should yeah, really, I remember. I should really be more prepared for these podcasts. It's coming out April 15th, 2021. Uh, so this is a remaster of a game that came out in 1998 or, or so. So, yeah, I, I, again, it's it's not a game for me. It is a game for some people. I just was not a fan of some of the games during this era. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I'm know. with you. It's, this is a very quirky JRPG. And it's... Uh... Yeah. It'll be a weird one. It'll be for the fans of Saga Frontier. I don't think it's something to return to, but I, you know what? If the reviews come out and it gets some good scores, I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. I don't know. Like I like I mentioned, just typically the Saga games just really, they're just not my jam. Um, but what is my jam is the, the Mana series. Oh, and we talked about this. I, we, we did, did. A, uh, an entire segment. We uh, did. Do you remember what we did for Legend of Mana? What it was one of the refuse, reuse, recycle. I, I think this was a uh, re what I, recycle. I don't remember recycle. I think it was like remake. Yeah, it was, I think it might have been a remake. It definitely wasn't a refuse because I, that I think that re, that reward or that award went to Dawn of Mana. I, As a refuse, right? Re, refuse, yeah. Um, but Legend of Man, I think was a, a kind of, not a recycle, but it was more of a kind of poured over and we did it. Uh, yeah. It, it, I think we could have gone either way. I forgot what we stood at, but it was either, you know, keep it as is and port it or, uh, remake it because I know I was vying for it. Cause there was, there's something special in Legend of Man yep. that didn't fully execute well or get the attention it kind of deserved on the playstation yeah so to see that they are actually returning back to this this was a huge surprise for me not only that not only because we talked about this specifically in that segment of doing of putting it in that realm of like remake territory and they're actually remake slash remaster they're actually doing it it's almost like we (laughs) willed it into existence that's what it felt like when they announced it. i'm like did we just will this into um, existence? You know what? I'm going to be honest. I think I think Square Enix just kind of listen listens to our podcast, and they're like, "Okay, we got you guys. <laughs> we, we we'll take care of you guys." <laughs> um, although, what I do want to see is that what or I'm sorry, what I do like is that Square Enix has not forgotten the Mana games. I do enjoy that they're remastering this. We had Trials of Mana recently. We got Legend of Mana coming. I want to see something new come out for these guys. And maybe that's what they're gearing up for is kind of a new mana game. Can we maybe next episode talk about a new mana game and then Square Enix will be like, hey, you know what? That's a great idea. We'll see you in three years. We'll we'll have it for you. Yeah. I I, I mean, the Trials of Mana, that was a full remake of yeah, it. And right. they did a really good job on it. I mean... You know, there's there's some there's definitely issues with that game, but sure. taking doing the effort, putting in the effort that they did, that was that was great. And looking at this Legend of Mana and this enhanced visuals that they have done to it, they put in effort and it looks good. Yeah. It looks real good, and, and it almost captures. It looks like it kind of captures the essence of the original. Uh, so I'm I am super excited for it. I, yeah. I'm definitely excited for this one. Although I did it's, just say I don't, I didn't like some of the PS One era games. I do like this, <laughs> so I'm gonna completely contradict myself um, in the next game that I actually liked. <laughs> but yeah, uh, tr- uh, Legend of Mana. Did we have a release date on that release window? June twenty fourth, two thousand twenty one. 
man, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm in on that one. I am in on yeah. that one. Yeah, totally. Totally as well. I'm, I'm just hoping that, uh, cause there are issues with the original and I'm hoping, I think it has to do with controls. Yep. Uh, I, I'm just hoping that they resolve those things and kind of keep it. Cause it's quirky. It's a very, very quirky game. Mm-hmm. Uh, just by the nature of like piecing the world, you construct the world as you're playing through the overworld as you're playing through it. Right. It's so weird. So yeah, I'm totally down because I did not play that game. Uh, my friend got it, rented it and played it in front of me and I watched him play it. Um, and it was a weird game. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited totally. for it. It's uh, it's going to be a good summer. I think, I think now that, you know, studios are, maybe kind of back in business, kind of gearing up. Maybe things were obviously delayed. I think we're going to see maybe too many games all at once. And I don't know how much say Nintendo has on some of these, you know, releases. Um, But I think Legend of Mana is getting released on a bunch of consoles. So, I mean, maybe not with that one. Anyway, uh, next we had Bravely Default 2. We had the final, the final trailer really wasn't too much. It was a little bit more of a story or narrative trailer. Nothing really kind of stood out. I am already kind of excited for this game. This is a game I've been, I've been waiting for. It comes out in like three, four days. So we had a little bit of Bravely uh, Default 2, which was kind of just sprinkled in there. I don't even know why it was there, to be honest with you, because they've, they've been, if you follow their, any of their social media stuff, this is, they've been pumping Bravely Default 2. Yeah. All right. Now, some of the bigger news. We're gonna we're gonna hit this one here. Monster Hunter Rise. Um, uh, we had kind of a big a big story reveal. Uh, a lot of new monsters were were shown in this. Uh, some Apex monsters. I think um, again, th- you're more familiar with the Monster Hunter universe. Yep. So. Yeah, it it seems like they went heavier on the storyline aspects Th- that trailer. Right, and it was a, it was a great trailer cuz I don't know what it was but that trailer it looked even it looked like it made the game even better looking than what it the demo was visually looked phenomenal. I don't know how much of it was in game cinematics but it looked like none of I'm it like, <laughs> none of it none was of it. no none uh, of it that's all that's all in game visuals like well, rendered on the switch uh, visuals it looks real good uh-huh. And they showed off one of the uh, exciting. So they did show off the story segments and and how it ties into like this this great rampaging thing that's happening. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, that's typical of Monster Hunter games. There's some big bad uh, that ties into either the monsters themselves are going crazy, or there is a big crazy monster that needs to be subdued in some way, and it's it's becoming this big giant threat to a village or a town or something like that. Sure. And that seems like. Uh, the general setup of what's going on in this one. It'll probably tie into like other ancient monsters or something like that. That's creating a disturbance or whatever. So that's just story stuff. The exciting stuff was just all the visuals, all the different sort of locales that they right. featured in and the monsters themselves. Cause they showed some new monsters I haven't seen before and they look, they look weird and cool and, and just interesting. Like Ooh. I can't wait to kill them. That's good because I mean there there's just a I like the fact that there's a lot of variety in the um in the monsters, right? They don't all look the same. They did a really good job at making them all look different. Even the the environments, they all look very different. I like the, in this one I think there was they were um like in caverns and caves fighting this sort of spider type of monster, not the soap monster. We we still have yeah. the soap monster to contend with, but this spider monster looked really really cool. I saw a lot of like co-op type of stuff in there, uh, with the kind of the um, what's that that light that wire bug? Is that what it's called? Wire bug? Yeah, the wire bug. Yeah, I saw a lot of traversal again, more different ways to use that wire bug. Uh, and man, it just looked awesome. It visually looked like it wasn't even running on a switch. I- I'm telling you this right now, Monster Hunter Rise is going to carry the Switch RPG wise. Pretty much for the whole year. For a like while, if, yeah. If nothing else comes out this year, it's still going to be a great year for RPGs just because of Monster Hunter Rise. It it just just from the demo and from everything that they've shown so far, and including what's coming up. I mean, do we want to mention that? Yeah, let's let's get in into that right now. So what's uh, coming up on March eighth 
is going to be a digital event hosted. I don't think it's by hosted by Nintendo. I think it might be Capcom digital mm-hmm. event or something like that. And it's not just on the eighth. It's going to be on the eighth, the eleventh, I think, and the ninth. Eighth, yeah. ninth, and eleventh. So it's multiple days of just showing off more and more Monster Hunter Rise stuff, and they'll probably even show off uh, Monster Hunter Stories too. Yeah, that's that's basically what it is. So it's Monster Hunter Rise, Monster Hunter Stories Two, Wings of Ruin. So March eighth, they're doing. Uh, it's they just label it as the Monster Hunter Digital Event. I think they're going to announce some season pass or some expansion type of stuff here, um, possibly. Yeah, so, maybe. Uh, so maybe just season I, pass where you can kind of buy in and just maybe get some expansions at a cost. Well, they do have a. Uh... I don't know. I, I forgot what they called it, like extra monster edition for Monster Hunter Rise. They did announce that, and it just mm-hmm. comes with cosmetics. Yeah. Um, there is the way they usually handle Monster Hunter is they they have free DLC updates all the time. Like every single Monster Hunter game that I've played ever since Try, they've just ha- added additional free content mm-hmm. to it. Uh, nothing too major. And then Monster Hunter World, they started to change that, but you still got a whole lot of free content in there. But they also included uh, per- um, purchasable cosmetics, just just gear, like like things, cosmetic stuff that makes your gear look different and stuff like okay. that and whatnot, armor. So they're, they're probably going to do that. But expansions, that's the one thing I'm not certain of. They... Did do an expansion for Monster Hunter World, but I don't. I don't know if they're going to do one for Rise. I, I don't hope know. They don't, and I hope just Rise is so big that they don't need to. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to to get incremental free free stuff. I mean, I, I, but I'm sure if the game is good, and so far I think what we've seen is is it's pro- very promising. And, I think they put- could. Pro- I think they could probably charge some sort of season pass or some something. And people would would buy it, I think. They could, they could. I I, I just don't know if that's what Capcom would do because Capcom yeah. they treat the Monster Hunter franchise real good. They yeah. they respect that franchise real well, and they they uh, have a loyal fan base because of it. So they they definitely haven't nickel and dimed uh, their fan base okay. yet. So yet. I'm hoping they they keep that practice going because man, Monster Hunter Rise this one. I mean, just the franchise itself is awesome, and this one's looking like it's going to be probably the best entry yet. Yeah. As, as we said, March 8th, they're doing a... Mon- it's just, it says Monster Hunter Digital Event. March 9th, they're, they're showing off a new Monster Hunter gameplay and hunting tutorials and director Q&A on March 9th. And then March 11th, they're doing a community live stream. I have no idea what that means, but what I do know is that, you know, the... the uh, the promotional art that they give shows both games, but really they're just showing off uh, Monster Hunter Rise stuff, and and essentially that's that's the bigger game, right? So oh, yeah. it doesn't really surprise me that they're doing that, but there could be some Monster Hunter stories involved in there as well. But yeah, that is really cool. I do want to get more more demo time in there. I have yet to really. I think the last time I played was with you, so I do want to get in there. And really nail down that combat because I still feel like I haven't found my weapon like you're you're supposed to do. Um, it, it, it takes a bit to figure out what what your weapon is, but I mean, if you just stick with one weapon and just stubbornly whack away with it, you know, after a few hours, you're going to get real good. Yeah. Uh, Other stuff they did for Monster Hunter was they showed off the console and the Pro Controller that was initially only for Japan. They they now have changed their mind, I guess. Um, they do like money, and they're now going to sell it in North America. So you can get the Pro Controller as well as the console. I think those pre-orders already went up. Um, I was able to nab a Pro Controller because that's what I do. I did not need another Switch console in my house. I already have three, one for my daughter, my son, and one for myself. I do not need another one. Although it is very tempting. Very tempting. Uh, and, and in all honesty... I just want the box. If someone wants to maybe sell me the box, that's all I really want. I just want the box. I'm trying to trying to find. Oh, there it is. There's that pro controller. I mean, it's yeah. I, I, I it's nothing really. Kind of, it's major. I mean, I just, I just like, I just like it. I just like it. 
Well, I'm I'm kind of due for a second Pro Controller, so yeah. So you know the Monster Hunter Pro Controller that would be one to get. There you go. Maybe. Although, if Metroid comes out, which it will, probably will, with a Pro Controller, that's that that is the one I get, <laughs> regardless of how many Pro Controllers I have. Oh, man. Metroid one comes out, I just get another one. There you go. Can I can Maybe. I just say some one last thing about Metroid and how Nintendo is really doing them dirty? How long yep. has this Switch been out? And there is yet to be a Metroid game on it. Uh, it's going to be four years in like one a mo- a week month? and a half. Yeah, week, two weeks. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It makes no sense to me. No Metroid game. Oh, man. Technically, they do have uh, Super Metroid on the Super Nintendo Don't. online thing. Don't. That's like almost in there, you know, just by default. Anyway, moving on. Last but not least, I think this is probably one of the biggest surprises in the Nintendo Direct. Absolutely. Was, was the next game from the developers of Octopath Traveler. So that development team has now taken that same HD 2D engine and has made a tactical RPG. Use, again, using that HD 2D engine, it's, it looks like it's still an Unreal Engine, I believe. Um, because yeah. some of, some of the the animations and everything they just look phenomenal phenomenal in that engine, and I'm going to be honest with you, I I I I'm not a fan of Octopath Traveler. I think I've said that so so many times in this podcast, uh, mostly because of the eight story pass, just not interconnecting, the lack of you know uh, party members failing to acknowledge each other's existence in that game. Um, but visually looked phenomenal, and that's what this game is looking like so far. The music, phenomenal. Um, yep. One of the things that, and, and I'm sorry, before, before we really get, get in there, is there, there's a demo that was also released with this announcement of Project Triangle Strategy. Okay. The name, awesome. I love it. You love the name. Seriously. I don't. I don't like it. <laughs> so, the the, so, yeah, the name is awful. So, yeah, the, these guys have, are coming out with a tactical RPG in the same engine as Octopath Traveler. It looks really, really cool. Uh, they did also announce that a demo is going to be available. Uh, it is available now. It's kind of like a not a tech demo. It's kind of, kind of like a, what do you want to call it? I don't know. I can't even think of the word. But basically, they're just looking. Um, they're looking for feedback. Uh, so yeah i mean it if it wasn't so heavily scripted in its story elements i would say it would be a proof of concept but it's more than that it's, it is definitely it, more than that it, it's kind of like it it's a slice of the middle what is it it's like chapter six you start off in it's mm-hmm. like chapter six and chapter seven uh and that's what you're playing through and it might even be like parts of chapter six and chapter seven so you're kind of midway through your characters start off at i think at level eight um and things are already happening and and you're playing through this middling uh section of the game before i'm sorry before you before you uh get deep into this as i was watching this and you know the whole thing i'm like wow this looks really freaking cool this looks really good i'm like this is a game that I think Johnny is drooling over right now. Like this game is made for you in mind. That that was my immediate thought was, oh my God, Johnny must be losing his mind right now. Because he's playing through, as you mentioned, Ogre Battle. You've yep. you have played through what was the other 3DS game? Uh, Radiant Historia. Yep. Um, and this game just kind of reminded me of those games, along with, you know, your I think the obvious is Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, and Tactics Ogre. And yeah. Tactics Ogre. So it very much reminded me of all the games that you've spent recently, I think, and again, multiple times, playing. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it, it's closest to Tactics Ogre and uh, Final Fantasy Tactics by, by a lot. I yeah. mean, it's, this game is oozing Fire Emblem uh, elements, right? That's another one at this... Uh, sort of mirrors but it's it's more so final fantasy tactics and tactics ogre this is kind of an, a game made by fans of those two games in particular uh the combat is it has if you look at the very b- 
bottom, it has the sort of typical thing that you'd expect uh, for those types of more nuanced tactics games mm -hmm. where you're not taking, it's not your army taking a turn like in Fire Emblem, it's more nuanced. It's each of the individual characters are taking their turn, and their turn is based on their speed, which will change based on what's what their what actions they're performing, uh, what other effects are occurring in the middle of battle and the enemies, and so you know you could have like three of your characters go, then one enemy, and then another one of your characters, and then five enemies. Yeah. It just really changes things up, so you have to sort of look at that initiative order and and see okay who's going next, who's going when, and. In this, it's it's interesting because they're really going. Um, they're making that aspect of it even easier to navigate through. I mean, it does have the uh, the little uh, list of uh, portraits on the bottom, but also if you click in the left stick, it will do a pop up of the what was it? It shows the TP points of each character that they currently have accumulated. It shows their health bar, and it also shows their. This is like the tooltip stuff. It shows their. Uh, their initiative order, the number. So they're going third, fourth, 15th, okay. you know, stuff like that. So that's in there as well. So it has all that stuff sort of uh, there for you to see. So it's got some nice quality of life stuff. Uh, when you're moving, it even shows like um, it, your movement is blue squares, but your blue squares can turn purple if uh, you're moving into an area that is attackable by right. enemies. The enemy so, range, uh, yep. It even has the Fire Emblem sort of red uh, beams mm -hmm. that, that go from the enemies to your character to show where they're going to likely aggro onto and attack. So it's they're taking a lot of those aspects from both Fire Emblem, from Tactics Ogre, Final Fantasy Tactics, and they're sort of pulling it all together into this game and it's looking good and it plays real good. I finished the demo for it. Um, it's only two battles in the demo. Right. And a lot of story stuff that happens in between. And some of the story stuff that they have, one of the main things that they're doing that also excited me. So the combat stuff that they have in there excites me. And there's more and we can talk more about the combat. Afterwards. And we will. Yep. Uh, and the other bit about it that excites me that's very unique is what they're doing with the story. And how you have to, there's going to be decision points that happen in the story. So it looks like they're going with the Tactics Ogre branching path type of uh, story stuff. But the, it's got a pretty significant twist in that your, your, I guess, party members, I don't know, I don't know if they're party members, but like the people that you consult with are going to weigh in and they're going to make their own decision on, right. on, on things that a yes or no is going to happen. Either... Um, in the sake of the demo, it's deciding whether you turn over the prince to the enemy or you defend the prince and, mm -hmm. and risk, uh, you know, your your city inhabitants, and and everyone gets to weigh in on that. And you can talk to each of the uh, party members and see where their stance is on it, and also have an opportunity to convince them to decide one way or the other. And right. depending on how everyone collectively votes, when it gets to that point in the game, they sort of drop their vote into like this little uh, scale, this balancing scale. Scale of and, justice. And the outcome is going to be the result, and that will change the 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 story. That that changes how things are going to play out. Mm -hmm. Now, both you and I, we decided on the same thing. So. Uh, right. So things kind of played out the same. That's why I was asking. I'm, I was kind of hoping that you went with uh, turning uh, turn, in the prince. Yeah, turn in the prince, but we didn't do that. Yeah. So we got the same uh, instance of things, but because you protect the prince, you a combat occurs right then, not right then and there, but a, a combat will occur because that's that's the decision that you're making. You know mm -hmm. that you're it's going to result in combat. And I'm kind of wondering, like, what happens if you turn the prince in? Does it still result in combat in the way that it did? I doubt it. Uh, it could turn into just something completely different storyline-wise, and it'd be interesting to see how that occurs. Yeah. What, what I really like is there's just, like you were mentioning, there's just a ton of different influences in the way the game can go. So you can yeah. try and, and talk to these party members or group members and try and influence them 
into your decision, but they could ultimately say, no, I'm, I, I don't want to do what you've done. And even in the demo, there was, there was the opportunity right before the, the verdict, I'll call it, comes in, where you can, even before that, you can kind of do some investigation in the town and gather tidbits of information to kind of sway these group members into your decision. Uh, so, yeah. and, and, and one thing I really would like to know, and I don't know that we'll ever know that, even prior to that, when talking to other NPCs in the story part previous to the battle, you, there, there were different options, different, narr- different choices. And I think in the trailer, in the, in the direct, they even says like there are three different options and they all mean different things. Like as soon as you select one, it shows that, that, that scale on the screen. So meaning like that was an important decision yeah. and you don't know which way that is swaying things. Um, in the background, which is kind of cool. Uh, I, I, I do, I do like that. Uh, so there's just, there's a lot of different ways things can go. And some of it's not even in your control, which is, which is kind of cool and kind of interesting. And I don't know if final fantasy tactics or tactics ogre has that. I feel like tactics ogre might have that. I'm not sure about final fantasy tactics. Yeah. Yeah. Final fantasy tactics is, is linear. So it doesn't have any, uh, it does have, you know, optional side questy and side characters and stuff like that, but it doesn't have a branching narrative like Tactics Ogre. So this is directly riffing on Tactics Ogre, its branching path story system, and uh, and then taking that even further with with uh, this unique twist of of having to talk with other characters. There's stuff that happens. Um, where characters started to join my um, my whatever it is my group, so I got extra characters to join in. Yep. It said that it was because of uh, decisions I made. Yeah. So I don't I don't know if that was if they would have not have joined if I didn't do those types of decisions or, or not. So that's the part that I'm not too certain of, but it, it's interesting. And, and that is a likely possibility where uh, you'll just acquire almost for certain, you'll just acquire characters that just won't be available depending on decisions to make. That was certainly the case on, on tactics ogre right. where, where you could, you make a decision and a character either lives or dies, joins you, doesn't join you, yeah. uh, becomes, becomes a final villain, doesn't become a final villain just based on like the things you do. And that's, that's exciting. Cause that, that is things that play out that, uh, kind of was there's, there's some games that just, that became their main attractor, like mass effect. That was one of the main attractors of mass effect was it's branching narrative, but, uh, it didn't, you know, Things, you know, stuff with Mass Effect did Mass Effect stuff and maybe <laughs> didn't fully execute. But uh, games like Tactics Ogre, it definitely executed and then some. And this one has the possibility of executing, so I can't wait. Yeah, I'm really excited for this. I think it's got a 2022 release window, so we have we have quite a ways for this. Uh, I, I mean, I've seen people just kind of really spitballing, like they want the Radiant Historia thing where they can kind of go back in time and, you know, re redo things or remake decisions that might've been, you know, substantial, that sort of stuff. I, I think at this point, we're just mixing way too many mechanics and it could really get confusing. Well, maybe, I mean, so tactics ogre had that too, but you got that ability to go back after you beat the game. So you beat the game and then you unlock the, I forgot what it was called, the chariot or, or something like that. And that allowed you to go back to diff, to key moments on key chapters okay, uh, and replay them. Actually, you could go all the way back to the beginning and just replay it and remake decisions. Yeah, that, so, I mean, that, I feel like that's a little bit different than what Radiant Historia did. Yeah, Radiant Historia, very different because yeah. that was that was part of the, part of the gameplay. Right, was, exactly. was going back in time that, that was actually part of the game in and of itself so i i doubt this game is going to offer or any other game is going to offer what radiant historia does because that was the whole point of radiant historia mm-hmm. was that time traveling yeah. storyline element um another another aspect of it, let's just get right into it, is the the battle uh yeah. the actual battling 
Now, I don't know about you, but that first battle just seemed really, really long. I don't know if it's just, I was just not good, didn't know what to expect, didn't really kind of just learning what to do. Um, but it, it took me a while. It, I mean, there were a lot of enemies. I, I mean, I was just kind of trying to feel, get a feel for the game. It took quite a bit of time. I don't, I don't know how long it took you. It was like a, like a half hour battle. Yeah, it took maybe uh, maybe 45 minutes, to be honest with you. It took, it took me a little bit longer. Uh, but what I really liked is, you know, we have we have elevation, so there's traversal in there. Uh, they showed off a little bit of that. Um, one other thing, and, and this is the reason why, one of the reasons why I love Divinity Original Sin 2, is they they added some, uh, they call it team, is it team tactics? I think I have it written here. Yeah, team up tactics. Basically, so you can lay down some ice, you can melt it down, you can make it water, you can electrocute it, and then you can push an enemy in there. So there's a lot of different game mechanics that you can do in there. And that's kind of what, again, what really draws me into Divinity Original Sin 2 is kind of like the environmental um, mechanics in, in, a, in a battle. Uh, another thing they have is kind of when you're flanking your enemies, you can, you can really do a lot of damage. And maybe, and I think I caught on to that way too late as I was trying to really figure out the game was where is if you're flanking an enemy, you can really get, Again, you can do double double the attacks. Yeah, essentially, it's, it's a guaranteed crit if you're attacking an enemy from behind. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the one of the things in there, and that's generally a, a thing in tactics based RPG combat, where uh, where you always want to hit the enemy from behind or from the side, and never, whenever you can, avoid hitting them directly from the front. Right. Uh, it's all about you know, that movement aspect of it. Um, yeah. Go on. Yeah, no, no. Like I was saying, I, I just love that that aspect of of that with the uh, the the environmental type of type of stuff. Yeah, that that environmental thing. I didn't. Were you able to actually do like environmental combo stuff? Because the the most I could do was I I I made the the floor icy, mm -hmm. or I I made some fire continue to burn. Uh, I was able to, I was able to melt the ice. Um, I was able to, obviously you can push enemies into it. I, I don't know that I, I did not get an electrocution or electric or lightning type ability. Yeah. I would think maybe if I leveled up enough in the demo, although it might be difficult to do, I could do it. Maybe. I don't know which character would do it, but I was able to do most of it. They did show that off in the, uh, they had like some sort of trailer. They showed that off in, in a trailer. Yeah. The the most I did with combo sort of terrain manipulation stuff was I was on top of a rooftop and my uh the shield, the guy with the big giant shield, uh he did he has an ability that does like a mm -hmm. massive knockback and he knocked someone back far enough where they fell off the backside of the roof oh. and fell to the ground and took extra damage from that fall. Nice. So stuff like that happened and I I, I did throw down a whole lot of stuff there was also um a uh the second battle in in the demo has you uh there's activatable traps that mm -hmm. you can do but you can also get your own allies caught in there so you have to be a little careful with that and sure. you have to yeah you have to like utilize the traps and it could it could be used against you or you can use it directly and that was interesting yeah uh in of itself so it's there's already more nuance there in in sort of the combat where it's 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 already given you way more layers of depth than fire emblem just just way more yeah uh because you can attack you can do an action first and then move afterwards right and that already puts it into a different category from uh from fire emblem because fire emblem it's always move first then perform an action and then you're done and in the tactics games, the more like the Tactics Ogre, Final Fantasy Tactics, and this one, it's you can move first, then do your action, or you can do your action first and then move and and do stuff afterwards. And the classes that they had in there, the, and I, I don't know if it's tied to classes or if it's tied to characters. That part I'm not certain of. Right. But at the very least, the characters all felt very different. The uh, what was it? Anna, the spy. Yeah, she could act twice, mm -hmm. which is really cool. She couldn't move twice. She moves, and then you can perform an action, and then move afterwards, and perform another action again. So 
she she's just like attacking stuff like crazy. And if you can never get manage to get her on some enemy's back side and attack multiple times on that, that's just great because you're critting multiple times. Right. Uh, she also has like this little sleep thing, and there's other characters that have their own unique ways of playing. There was only one character that could just cast healing magic. Right. Uh, there was a fire magic user, an ice magic user. There's um, the prince was on a horse. Which gave uh, extra movement. There was another lady, um, I forgot her name, but she was on uh, like a bird, yep. ostrich thing, with, and she was shooting with a bow. So interesting, interesting characters there, um, and how they played out, and there the ways that they use the abilities is tied to this TP thing, which is basically mana but without numbers. It's do you have a point of TP, just one point. Then you can do anything that costs one point. And there's some moves that cost two points. I wasn't too certain how that worked by the end. I think it's you get one TP per turn. Right. Is that what it seemed like to you? I I, I was I was also in in here. So I'm like, all right, how do I regenerate some of these, some yeah. of the TP? And and again, I may have to. I want to play through it again and just kind of get a better grasp of everything. Yep. But yeah, I wasn't sure how how that happened. Every character, so when you um, when you go into like the encampment or look at your roster, you can look into the details of each of your characters and see their stats, which I don't care about their stats, and you can see their abilities and look into what each ability does. And most characters had like two activatable abilities and two passives, most right. of them. Yeah. Uh, so they had like four different things to look at, and some of these. Um, some of these abilities were, uh, I, forgot, I forgot what they were, but I knew that some of them uh, gave additional ways of gaining TP. Oh, okay. So there was interesting stuff. The, the strategist guy, um, Bernard or Bene- Briggy? Benedict? Bene- Benedict, yeah, there we go. I knew it would be. That <laughs> guy, uh, he eventually got the ability to, uh, it costs like three TP, and he could grant an ally uh basically their their sort of movement their um their clock before they can act again their initiative Mm -hmm. he can wipe it down to zero so that they act immediately after he finishes his turn so he can kind of like make people take their turn again quicker uh there's people with like hay spells that cause people to move faster and take their turns quicker there's there's the foundation there for excellence because it's already it's already shown depth and complexity right and you add to that the terrain environmental hazards that can go on and the natural traps that can happen in these sort of these levels which play out like a diorama Mm -hmm. uh these these battle levels and that look cool and that's executing real well and there's verticality to it like this is going to be great oh and that last little bit of the follow-up attack yeah, 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 yeah. So the follow-up attack is if you attack an enemy and there's someone on the opposite end of the direction that can attack the enemy as well. Kind of flank, they, flanking position. Kind of, yeah, in, in the flanking, but you can also do it with uh, with just like archery and stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. you can have someone, as long as they're positioned in certain op- opposing directions and within attack range, they can get follow-up attacks on enemies. And I think it only applies to melee. Characters within melee range can perform the follow-up attack. I haven't seen an archer be able to perform a follow-up attack yet. But that's a very interesting and powerful mechanic because... Yeah, positional, and position it's, matters. It matters in a very big way. And especially when there's a lot of movement manipulation abilities that you have mm-hmm. where you can knock back enemies and if you knock them back into your ally your ally will then they, they normally wouldn't have made that that follow-up attack but because you knock them close enough they'll get that follow-up attack it's real cool yeah yeah there's a lot of nuance in there which is what i really really like gives you a, a ton to think about uh, but I mean, it's not to say that there weren't any issues. I mean, there there were some issues. I think before yeah. we started recording, uh, you had mentioned mentioned the uh, voice acting was <laughs> kind of subpar, and uh, I want to 
I want to say that that was the that was the same. It was the same case for Project Octopath Traveler when that was a thing. Like the voice acting was a problem then as well, and they I don't know if what they did um, because I didn't really play too much of it, but I believe that they they went ahead and they re-recorded everything. I mean, essentially, what we played is kind of like a tech. I would call it a tech demo. They basically gave us every single class to try and experiment with. They really just kind of laid it all out there. Uh, but the voice acting, I, I'll let I'll let you comment on that. Was not the greatest in your opinion. Terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> I wouldn't. It's I wouldn't bad. say it was terrible. Uh, I mean, I'd have to go back and really kind of point out maybe what character wasn't bad. But I mean, there were some decent characters in there. All so. of them. All <laughs> of them were bad. Every single one of them was either mediocre at the best or bad. The only one that was decent enough and could exist uh, in the final version was the Prince Roland. Okay, that was the only one I was I was actually okay with. Uh, I think the Anna character was okay, but not still not good enough. Like get rid of them all. The voice acting was ter- Benedict was awful. Try again. Awful. The worst one is the main character of the game. Yeah. Uh, Saren something. Saren so. I I don't know. I I didn't really. I didn't honestly. Oh, yeah, I didn't honestly put too much into you know story and what what not. I don't remember the characters' names. I remember what happened, uh, but I was really more focused on the combat because I think that's what I was really concerned about. But yeah, I I mean I totally get it. Some of this like a some of the voice acting was passable, but yep. yeah, I could see that. I I did have some, and I recorded it for the YouTube channel. I did have some visual glitching. With the yes. anytime, anytime an arrow was shot, the screen went black for a second. I I don't know why that was, but every single time, I'm not a, like every single time an arrow shot, whether it was by my character or an enemy, the screen went black. I did have to fight the camera a little bit in some situations. I did kind of mess with it just to kind of yep. see what different angles there were because you could do it like a top down view. You could you know zoom out a little bit, but there were some instances where I'm like, all right, I really can't get a good camera angle on my character. I don't know if there was kind of a free roam camera. I, I don't know if that was a thing. I don't think it was, but that, that might've helped my situation. But yeah, I was fighting the camera a, a little bit. Well, the camera is free room. I mean, well, I mean, essentially it, it is, but I, I, I don't know when you want to see what your character animation is doing. There were some, there, I had some, I had some problems because once you're, your animation starts, your camera is locked. So you're, you're, you're unable to really see what's going yeah. on. Um, I'm, I'm, and, yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you. The camera definitely needs to be improved. Yeah. And there were some times I'm like, all right, I don't even know what square I'm on. So I'm like, all right, got to mess with the camera. got to really kind of situate myself. I'm like, all right, well, so it kind of slowed the game down. But that's I think that's OK, because this is a type of game where it's not an action RPG. You really want to take the time and into doing that and maybe that was kind of my maybe some of it was just an issue with me but i was i was just really kind of the camera and i were not friends i'll just say that much it yeah it's um yeah it needs to get some additional polish and and working through and and enhancements on the camera i'm definitely with you and there are I didn't get that arrow visual glitch but i got um ui glitches where uh, if you have an attack and you queued up and you hover over different enemies, it'll show the potential results of the attack. Yep. Uh, how much damage you'll deal to the enemy, the percentage hit chance, stuff like that will show up. And some situations where you, ho- where I hover over a character, it won't show anything. And then I sort of move the cursor off and on again, and then boom, it, it appears. So uh, there's some some jankiness and some quirkiness to it. I mean, it's a demo, so yeah, ha- being buggy is not surprising. It, it's not only just a demo; it's like a demo, like even before the, it's like a pre-demo. Because I mean, this game yeah. is not coming out for a while, and I'm pretty certain we'll get another one at some point. But I think overall, they they have something kind of special here. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. It's it's definitely going to be special. The story I was paying attention to, um, and I am a little worried because I'm getting vibes of Octopath 
sort of uh, writing in here uh, in, in a way of, of not taking it serious enough. And it, it's definitely a more serious story than Octopath. That, that. that yep. is for this is this is already seeming like a better written story, but it's not it, it's not executing as well as it could. So yeah. I am a little I am definitely worried about the story, but I'm not worried about it. I, I'm I'm safer knowing that what I've played so far it looks like it's going to be a better story than Octopath. Yeah. And, and who but knows? Sure. May, maybe there's like whatever we've like witnessed here, whatever we've played may not even make it <laughs> to the final version. You know, maybe this just was a working demo. All right. You guys figure it out. Let us know what you think. And then we'll kind of go from there. Who knows? Uh, and they got a, it's, it's the scripting and the actions being taken by the characters. They need to really just get away from the tropey stuff, get away from the cliche stuff, and mm-hmm. avoid that as much as possible. Take yeah. a page directly out of Final Fantasy Tactics. Take a page directly out of Tactics Ogre. Do what they do. Do those things. Get rid of the tropiness and the the obvious sort of uh, you know cliche moments, and, sure. and do do its own thing and. and and yeah. quality. Uh, one one final note on on this is the uh, is the working title here. <laughs> now, <laughs> this is just a final thing. Please do not let it be Project Triangle Strategy. For like, if if you're gonna do anything, Octopath Traveler, you know, yes, kind of. It guess made some sense. I don't know, whatever. But it ended up being Project Octopath Traveler became Octopath Traveler. Do not let Project Triangle Strategy become Triangle Strategy. Please. Just, just call the game <laughs> Trinity. Just call it Trinity. And I, don't, be done. I don't know. I, I, whatever you choose, just don't let it be Triangle Strategy. Please. Any, anything than tri- don't Don't put in the word triangle and don't put in the word strategy. Yeah. At and don't all. Put in, definitely don't put in the word project. No, no, not at all. I understand nope. it's a working title, but my goodness, please. All right, let's let's move on. So that was the Nintendo Direct. Tons of stuff came out. Like I said, it was a like we'd mentioned, it was a 50 minute direct. We got a lot of stuff out of that. Now, earlier this week, was it yeah, earlier this week, we had BlizzCon. BlizzCon announced quite a number of things, one of which was a major, major surprise for Switch people was the announcement of Diablo 2 uh, Resurrected. Is it called Resurrected? I think Resurrected. It's called Resurrected. Coming out for the Switch, guys. This is this is a big, big deal. A very big deal. Now, we, we did have Diablo 3, which was also a very big deal. And it actually runs really, really well, surprisingly well. So now what we're getting is Diablo 2. And a lot of people... <laughs> I think a lot of people were in awe that this was coming to the Switch because typically the Switch gets left out of announcements like this. And yeah. if you're at all a fan of Diablo 2, I got to say what what they've done to this, this kind of HD remaster of this, what they've done to it is they've made it look freaking fantastic. I think it looks really, really phenomenal. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not the biggest Diablo 2 fan only because of what it looked like. I didn't like the way it looked like. I understand it has a gameplay loop that people absolutely love and it kind of broke, let's say, made the mold for what ARPGs like Diablo, that's kind of where it really stems from, is Diablo 2. And I totally understand that. It's just, for me, I just couldn't get into stylistically and visually what it looked like. I just couldn't get past that. But I will say, because I am a fan of Path of Exile, and that obviously stems on what Diablo 2 has done. This looks like this looks really, really good. And it looks like what Path of Exile obviously looks like now. And I think I think I am gonna have a tremendous time with this game. This and this is coming from someone who did not like Diablo 2. Diablo 2 Resurrected just looks really, really good. There have been a lot of improvements done to it and the, just the way that they're they they've kind of went through every single image 
every every single everything of what Diablo Two was. They 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 kind of made it three D because Diablo Two was a it was a pixel art two D game. You know there was really no, it was not three D at all. And this is this is has that. Well, I wouldn't say it's not three three D at all. It did have a um a parallax scrolling effect that gave it a degree of of. 3D dimensionality, uh, yeah, yeah dimensionist to it, uh, and that was a very cool effect. Mm. And it also had um, the artwork, the way they did the art in Diablo 2, which was a way that they did a lot of games in the 90s, uh, was they modeled everything in 3D and then took a photo of that model and built sprites yeah. from that. Yep, and that's that's essentially what they did, and. Funny enough, because they did that, that allowed this remake to kind of leverage and and the people that because they they chatted right. Blizzard did a big giant because it was part of BlizzCon. They did a big giant sort of deep dive uh, panel of talking about their experience and stuff like that. And they were able to use those original art assets mm-hmm. of of those three D models. Uh, I mean, uh, they were ugly, but they had that as a nice reference of what they did before in order to you know, uh, make something newer, but derived directly from the original content. So right. you could tell everything that they have in there. It it just looks like Diablo 2, but it's clearly it's not Diablo 2. It, it just but it looks like it. it. They like nailed how Diablo 2 could look in a 3d engine and they pulled it off like like it, it it looks like diablo 2 and it looks incredible even though diablo 2 you know if you run it in modern day it doesn't it's not something pretty no thing. and and what's cool is that they did mention i don't know if this is going to be available to all versions but you can actually switch back and forth yep, and yep. and um, w- the way that they they did this game, the way that they kind of remastered it, is they essentially have two different versions running at the exact same time. So you you are actually playing both versions at the exact same time. So the three D version or the new version, the the remastered version is is what you see, and and they've essentially just kind of overlaid. This is kind of what I got from it in this deep dive. They overlaid the two D version. Uh, so again, um, well, uh, so the way. It- the way they explained it was that the gaming logic, so you have a couple of different things that you do in your main game loop uh, for, for game engines, and uh, things like there's the audio section, like something that takes care of all the audio, something that takes care of all the rendering, yep. and then something that takes care of inputs from the user, and then something that takes care of uh, the game logic, right? So they basically took all of the gaming logic and all the things that are that run on Diablo 2 uh, all those still exist and still yeah. run this updated version except every time there's a call to the graphics card to draw something right to here's an image draw this image onto that location on the screen right that's essentially the drawing calls uh, in a nutshell they changed that and captured that aspect of those calls and built the 3D engine to it so that whenever it's making a call out to say, hey, I, I need to draw the shield right. uh, at this location, it's now rendering the 3D, 3D shield, shield instead yes. of the 2D sprite. So they kind of uh, swapped. It's way more complicated than that, but they essentially like, kept all as they said they kept all of the logic that ran diablo 2 all of the things that were tied directly to the engine and games back then they tied uh the frame rate to both the rendering and the game logic Mm -hmm. and in a sense they kept the frame the frame rate of the game logic still running at 25 25 frames per second yeah the old old gaming yep but because they overhauled the graphical side of it, they this allowed them to make the graphics run in the rendering and the audio, uh, for that matter. Um, even though audio isn't frames per second. Uh, either way, uh, they allowed that to run at 60 frames or more per second because they, mm-hmm. they coupled it 
uh, instead of animations being tied to frame counts, they decoupled it and made am- animations tied to time itself. Time, yeah. So, and that makes a big difference. And now everything that is running on this uh, this remade, uh, resurrected edition of Diablo Two, it just looks smoother, looks nicer, and also the fact that it's running on a 3D engine meant that the lighting was actually illuminating the 3D environment more. That's and that's. that's- that's what really kind of drew me in was the the lighting and the lighting effects and the kind of from the from the uh, elemental parts of it, you know, the 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 light from the electricity or the fire was really what stood out. Yeah, it it looks it looks beautiful and lighting in the original Diablo and Diablo Two was a very important graphical thing. They actually, I mean, it it was a graphically impressive thing that they did back in back in the nineties and in two thousand. Uh, for Diablo 2, that that effect that they pulled off was impressive. Mm-hmm. It was lighting, good lighting at that time. Sure. And what they did here is essentially they they kept that because I mean lighting. I kid you not, lighting was very important for Diablo because it was you had a light radius. They, the game literally made it a mechanic that would be attached to like a magical item affix to your item where it gave you plus one. Uh, light radius or plus three light radius where it actually gave you better illumination around you because the game was dark it yeah. was dark 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 and it was dark for a reason and and that the the, the deeper you went down into into the layers of of the various hell worlds uh the darker things got and you needed that illumination otherwise you weren't going to be able to see enemies that were just a few pixels away from you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, visually it looks stunning. Now, they, if you've played the original, uh, this does include the, or will include the expansion of Diablo 2, which is, I, the name escapes me. Lord of Destruction. Okay, so it includes that, but apparently you can play, you can play it as the original. You don't have to play it with the expanded character set. Um, so they, they've done that but there are also some quality of life improvements that they again when when we watched the deep dive they didn't want to get they didn't want to stray too much from what the original had because the original obviously a lot of people loved it but there were some improvements that people that people were crying for uh shared stash was one of them what people would do before is they would have a character right and this character would essentially it's just a mule account basically and this character was either hoarding stash or bringing stash from one character to another. So, so what they're doing is just a st- shared stash, no need for mule accounts. So, again, quality of life type of deal. Another interesting thing, because Diablo 2 does have multiplayer. It has PvP along with co-op. I'm not a big fan of PvP in these games, but whatever. Um, one of the bigger things is the global servers. So... If you have friends that are kind of living in a different area um, that you you're you're not in, say if you're a U.S. East and your your friend is on a U.S. West or an Asian server, you wouldn't be able to play with them. But now you can. Uh, it's kind of a global global server across the world. Anybody can play with everybody. Yeah, uh, no no region locking type stuff. Yeah, so that's kind of cool because sometimes people would have to create an account just for. Okay, I'm playing with my friend today. This is my account to play with my friend while I have another account. So it, it just got really complicated. So everybody can play with everybody. Um, so uh, One thing I dug up on that is that they also still kept the peer-to-peer connectivity. Okay. Where, where you could, apparently, according to what I read uh, from the devs, you can still punch in your, t- your IP uh uh information and you know directly connect to someone else's pc i don't i don't know if you're gonna be able to do that for a switch but uh yeah you can still direct connect to other people and and do multiplayer that way as well hmm, on inter- this. interesting yeah i don't even know if on the switch if you can mess with your tcp ip settings um uh, you, i'm you sure can. you can yeah you can it's uh but it's more so that uh if it's built into the app Diablo itself, yeah, uh, the game app. I don't know if they would b- allow that to be built into the gotcha. Switch version, the console versions for that matter. But they could. 
And uh, I know that the PC version is going to have it. So if the consoles have it as well, that's just weird. It's it's funny, too. I like it. <laughs> I like it that they do that. Yeah. Set also local co-op uh, and, and just local. You don't even need to be connected online. You just punch in someone switches IP and you're playing uh, into it and start playing mm. wireless. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how far that stretches. I'm sure that'll just be for the, the PC audience Uh, but we'll see um advanced stats was uh kind of an important thing so people wouldn't have to um say for example they gave this example for magic item find i think it was magic item find so typically you're you're on your gear there'll be a magic item percentage uh for loot drops and you would have to actually go out and kind of figure that all out okay this gear does this percentage and this gear does this and you'd have to add it all up or all this do a bunch of math and now all this now with the click of a button or whatever it is it just shows it all um yeah, it shows you the summary so yeah you don't have to go like all right what's my gloves give me what's my ring give me all right 10 percent there 15 percent there 13 yeah. percent there right it just yeah uh, it's tied to your character sheet panel there's that advanced stats button you click that it pops up another panel and that shows just a big giant drop down of all the individual affixes that you've been awarded and the sum total of each individual one i think for a lot of modern games this is this this is a common thing but for diablo 2 before this was just not a common thing so very cool. Uh, controller support, obviously, not just for the consoles, but also for PC. Uh, this still runs on kind of a grid-based system. They were actually, in the deep dive, they mentioned that. It's still kind of a grid-based system, but you don't really, again, it's kind of hidden behind the scenes. But with the controller support, there were kind of a few things that they had to fight with. Uh, but, so yeah, so controller support is kind of cool. Along with that, tied to the console version, uh, another thing was uh, auto loot gold. So typically on the PC version, you'd actually have to click and pick up the gold. And now, because if you're on a controller, picking up the gold kind of became a little tedious. So it's just kind of auto picking that up. I, I got to be honest, I don't know why you wouldn't have that on all the time. Just just a me thing. Yeah, I'm I'm totally with it. I mean, for purists, I can see the reason why is because sure. uh, when you play the original and you die the penalty for death was you dropped i think it was like half your gold or or a good chunk of your gold so in needing to get to your corpse and actually click on your pile of gold uh before you die uh was something that you had to worry about because doing corpse runs was sucked it sucked uh but intentionally it, it was part part of the the hard nature of you know doing the nightmare difficulty runs and stuff right. like that in Diablo. Right. So I could see people, you know, wanting to have that aspect preserved. So making mm-hmm. it optional is, is just great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm going to turn it on by default. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to run and have my goal, my feet pick up my goal. That's it. Just just kind of like uh like Pele or Ronaldo just kind of kick it up and right into your pocket. Exactly. Uh a multiplayer quality of life uh, was auto partying. So kind of like, again, this is all just stuff that we're so used to now, right? Just auto partying, you know, just kind of picking up onto an online lobby, getting, getting people to play with. Again, this is just stuff that's being integrated now with, with this version. Um, party chat. I don't know how that's going to work with the Nintendo switch version. Obviously with other versions, it makes total sense with the Nintendo switch version. I know that there's some party chat with some games. I don't know. I don't know how this is going to work. I, I, I so, know. Maybe it'll be integrated I, within within the game. It'll if I have to guess, it's going to be just like how there's a bunch of other Switch games that support keyboards, USB keyboards. So I think it's as simple as plug in a USB keyboard and boom, you can start uh, chatting with other people. I, I'm, I'm almost certain they're going to include that. And if they include that, it makes me wonder, would they include... USB mouse support. I mean, USB mouse support is a thing with the Switch. Yeah. So, I mean, we could get essentially the same experience as PC without any sacrifices sure. on Switch. Okay. Yeah. That's exciting. That that I we'll see we'll see how that goes. 
Um, one thing I do want to see, and I don't know that they made mention, was voice chat. I, I want to know if that's a thing. The original didn't have voice chat, so... Yeah, but we're we're in, like, 2021. This is, like, what, 30 years later? Whatever it was. We, we got phones. We can use our <laughs> Nintendo app. Oh, shut your yapper. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, wh- another thing that they did is they completely remade the cutscenes. And I think they just they said it was almost like thirty minutes of cutscenes. They completely redid those, which is thank you. I appreciate that. Um, mod support on PC. I I highly doubt this is going to be for a console thing. Potentially, maybe, but yeah, PC gets all the cool stuff with the modding. And that actually, if you want to go back to the auto gold loot thing, that was actually a mod at one point. So they they did implement some of the mods. Of, of yesteryear uh what else do we have here improved sounds they didn't they did not they did not change the music they improved on some of the 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 sounds like for example rain effects uh running effects or ground walking on water that sort of stuff they did not change any of the music and i think a lot of people are very happy about that because the music and again, I'm not a biggest Diablo 2 fan back then. I am now. I'm very much a fan now. But back, the music was always really top notch. It was always really yeah. good. And and they didn't they didn't change that. Uh, but what they did change was the the sound effects. And they also enhanced the surround sound in a dramatic way. I mean, it, they have this is going to support 7.1 surround. Oh, good. I mean, this is going to the atmosphere of. Diablo and the sound effects. I think way back when it did support 5.1, but and it was back, you know, back then when Diablo 2 first came out, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't people were still kind of new in at least games were still relatively new to developing for surround sound. Right. So they're going full tilt on this and I can just imagine how awesome that's going to sound especially with how atmospheric Diablo 2 specifically was. And, mm-hmm. you know, it would be great to hear, you know, those little gibbering imp demon things, you know, from behind my ear uh, as it's, uh, you know, yeah. off in the distance and going, uh, it would just be great. So yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to the improved sound. It also has, uh, uh, we already discussed uh, just various visual improvements like lighting and other stuff that comes with this uh, brand spiffy new. 3d engine rendering engine yeah yep we we mentioned you can kind of switch back and forth the original graphics again th- that's the purest people uh cross progression is a kind of a big deal now yeah. i don't know if that's just between consoles or you know between pc or just between everything it's everything so that that's even that's even all, more awesome so you can just take your character any on, on any console and any pc that's just that's just awesome. Yeah, but you got uh, you got to buy the game multiple times. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are people that will do that though. You you can have your main account. Your you can be a, a PC. You're you're a PC player. You only pay play on PC. But now you're on a road trip. But you still have your. You can have a switch, and you can you know do whatever you want on there. I mean, there's other ways around that too. But yeah, uh, I think that's that's kind of cool. And I think the Switch will see the biggest bump in this cross-progression thing because of its, you know, the ability to take anywhere. To be portable, yeah. 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 Another thing was... uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say, that's that's a big deal. It is a big deal. Uh, Another thing was item comparison. Again, we see this a lot with the modern gaming, but before you couldn't compare an item in your inventory uh, to what you're wearing. Again, now, now that's... You can. Uh, so there's a great quality of life thing. Uh, short and ladder season. I was never a big into the the seasonal characters. I don't know if that was a thing that you did. I liked, I loved my characters, so I never wanted to be involved in a lot of the seasonal characters. But I guess the, this, the, the season, their, their, their plan is to shorten that season where before it was six months, which is kind of a long time. They might even change it to th- three months. They didn't really say. But yeah, six months for a season is is a very long time. So they're thinking about changing that. Yeah, I mean, it it's probably it's probably just that because 
it's going to be a new game. A lot of people, and, and it's also going to be a return of a lot of seasoned people as well. Yep. And the big thing with the ladder is really just like who gets to level 99 first. Yeah. That's basically, yeah, that's basically it. So yeah, they, they're, they're going to be shortening that there is an expansion included, which can optionally be, you know, turned on or, or turned off or however you want to play it. Um, for me, expansion always on. I'm just a noob to all this anyway. Uh, they, some features, colorblind mode, enhanced text, and also the widescreen aspect ratio is uh, new to this modern version. Biggest or a couple of big surprises. Number one, it's it seems like it's going to be relatively cheap. Uh, you would you would mention you saw this. I think it's on Battle.net for forty dollars. Uh, I saw it on it was I think it was PC Gamer article. Okay. Okay. Added up. That seems pretty inexpensive. Uh, I don't see an issue with that. I hope we don't have to pay the switch tax for that. I mean, that's a possibility. But forty dollars, heck, I'll buy it. I, it's definitely going to be worth it, even if it's the full sixty. It's going to be worth it. Yeah. I mean, this is looking like it's going to be quite special. Mm -hmm. And to top it all off, it's coming out this year. I did not expect that at all. Especially for the, especially because this wasn't really on anyone's radar as, and even for the switch version, it was not on anyone's radar for it to come out this year. Wow. Wow. And, and I think I've heard people say that it's coming out possibly this summer. So it's even sooner than I, than I was even expecting. So this is a, it's going to be a must buy for me. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely I'm, I'm into it. Like I had mentioned before, I was I'm big into Path of Exile, and Path of Exile is essentially kind of like your Diablo two, 3D version of Diablo two, and that's what this is. This is a 3D version of Diablo two. So I'm in it. I'm in it for sure. This is this is the best story version of Diablo. Is Diablo two? It's the best atmospherical version of Diablo. It's the best music. The best. This is the best Diablo 2 is the best Diablo. And now they're correcting the worst parts of Diablo in modern day, which was the visuals. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're streamlining some of the stuff and while maintaining a lot of the old stuff. I mean, sure, it, the gameplay might be a little clunky here or there compared to modern day uh, Diablo 3 or Path of Exile, but it's Diablo 2 and it will stand on its own as being excellent. One thing I'm hoping they do is there were gameplay, unique gameplay things that they expanded on with patches that came out way, way into the future, like like 10 years after Diablo 2. Maybe not 10 years, but like <laughs> six years after Diablo 2, Lord, the expansion, the Lord Destruction expansion, they, they continued to sort of come out with patches that balanced skills and classes and stuff like that. And they added one of the patches I remember was a was a crazy one that added a thing called synergy to your skill tree, where if you put points into lower level skills, the early game skills, uh, you felt bad because those points were were essentially useless because you weren't using, for example, uh, bone teeth. Uh, <laughs> in the late game, you're using like Bone Spear or Bone Spirit, which was like the higher level, better, more mana efficient, higher DPS type of skills as the as a Bone Mancer, Necromancer. But when they came out with that synergy patch, those skill points that you dumped into Bone Teeth, for example, were not wasted because for every point you put into those, it caused other skills to gain an increase in damage or, or something that they gained a benefit by you dumping points into other skills. So I'm hoping that they kept that in here as well, because that wasn't part of, of Lord destruction or the original. That was something that came in a patch. Uh, afterwards. Okay. Hmm. So I'm hoping that they keep all of the patch changes, the most modern patch changes that they did, right. the most up to date ones in there or maybe who knows maybe they did something where they um where they can where you can select as a player you can select which patch 
you're playing as where it's the 1.0, the 1.01. Right. I think the synergy one was, I think I even remember the number. I think it was like uh, the 1.08 patch. <laughs> that might have been it. That's crazy. I could be wrong, though. I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, I mean, if this is forty dollars, we're we're both on it. I am so ready to play this. I, I think this year is already looking so so good, especially with this direct. We have the Monster Hunter uh, stuff. We have Bravely Default coming coming out in a few days. Um, then we have Diablo. I mean, we're just we're getting spoiled right now. So I think I think the best is yet to come. I think we're still there's still more coming. There's still more coming. Uh, but yeah, any, any, um, any last minute stuff you want, like to talk about in Diablo two or. I, I just think with Diablo two being certain for this year, mo- the two monster hunter games, bravely defaults coming out in a couple days, like this year is going to be an excellent year for RPG gaming. Yeah. Like, and then the advent of, uh, what's coming up next year with, uh, triangle stupid name. <laughs> Uh, I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, man. We got some good stuff. Good stuff. All right. That is going to do it for today's episode of the Switch RPG Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, if you do have any questions or comments, please don't forget to email us at podcast at switchrpg.com. If you listen on an app, don't forget to give us a rating and review. We want to climb up those charts on those platforms. So your support would be amazing. And finally, remember, you can head over to switchrpg.com for all your RPG needs on the Nintendo Switch. Until next time, see you later.